Hi, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and today I'm going to do a deep dive into Orca Slicer and Pressure Advance. So let's go ahead and get started. To start off, I just want to define Pressure Advance. Pressure Advance is the idea there's pressure in the nozzle that's causing filament to be extruded. As you move around the model, the printer is changing speed. If there was no Pressure Advance, we can look at this diagram right here. You're traveling at a slow speed, then the printer is going to speed up, and when it speeds up, it causes basically a gap in the filament. It's not extruding enough. We're going at a faster speed, and then it slows down again. When it slows down, too much filament is coming out, and it causes a blob. Now, you see this often, particularly with corners. If you have too much pressure advance, your corners don't adhere together correctly. In fact, that happened to me where the model literally fell apart because I had messed up with the pressure advance and missed a decimal place. The other thing you'll have is when it's changing speeds to corners, your corners will have a bulge in them and won't be sharp. Looking at these pictures at the bottom here, these are extreme examples. Pressure advance is the idea that there's a correction that's applied to the filament, so you get that steady stream of filament regardless of the speed you're traveling. So in Orca Slicer, you actually have three different PA tests. So let's switch over to Orca Slicer and take a look. So I've opened up Orca Slicer, and if I go up here to the top under Calibration and Pressure Advance, you'll see I have three different settings. So I have three different methods. That's the PA Tower, the PA line and the PA pattern. I also have two extruder types, a direct drive and a Bowden. If we just toggle between these two choices for extruder type, you'll notice that the PA or pressure advance for a direct drive extruder is going to be much smaller than that of a Bowden drive extruder. So now we have these three tests. And there's plus and minuses for all three tests. And today we're just going to go over and look at all three. And I'd like to see how close do each of these tests get to being the same or being very close in value. Now, probably the easiest is the PA Tower. The PA Tower is not really dependent on how good your first layer is. Where the PA line and the PA pattern both are sort of dependent on how good and how tuned you have your printer to lay down a really good first layer. So I'm going to start with a PA tower and I'm going to leave all these values the same. I'm going to hit OK. And as you can see, it's generated the tower. I'm going to slice the model and you'll notice that one, it does some mouse ears here at the bottom to hold it down, which I like. And then also it's just printing these walls. Now, these walls are actually two layers thick, or two lines, I'm sorry. So, what you do with this model is we're going to print it and then look at the sharpness of these corners. And then, based on the sharpness of the corners, we'll pick where the corners look the sharpest and use that as our calculation to determine our pressure advance. So, let me go ahead and send this to the printer. We'll send this, we'll take a look at the model, and then we'll move on to the pressure advanced line test and compare that. So let me pause this while it's printing and I'll come back in a moment. Now, as you can see, I've completed printing my model and I accidentally printed with dual color PLA. That's okay. I can still see everything well. And I wanna print with this PLA shortly anyway. Now, what I'm doing is looking at these corners and trying to determine where the corners, for me, look the sharpest. Now, looking at this, let me take off the mouse ears. I'm just going to look at this corner here. And I'm thinking it's bulging a little down here, and maybe it looks good right up maybe this area is where i think it looks the sharpest so what i'm going to do is take my calipers and i have a new set of cheap calipers so i'm just going to use those 
those are zeroed out. And let me start here at the bottom. And let me look here where I think this looks the sharpest. I think it looks sharp right about there. So I'm at 30.3 millimeters. So that is the number I'm going to start with. And let me switch over to my spreadsheet and we can type those numbers in. Now I'll also be adding this calibration to my Clipper calibration website as well. So in my spreadsheet, I've plugged in the measured value as well as my step values. I'm using a direct drive. And so I get a value of 0 0.0606. So let me go ahead and add that to Orca Slicer. So I've opened up Orca Slicer and the pressure advance, I want to go over to filament. So I want to look at my filament settings. I want to enable pressure advance. And then I want to change the value here to 0606. And that now represents my new pressure advance value. I'm going to hit save and OK. And now that I've done the pressure advance with towers, let's take a look at it, the line test. So for the line test, I start with an empty build plate, go up to the top, calibration, pressure advance, and rather than PA tower, I'm just going to do PA line. Now, as I noted earlier, PA line and PA pattern are very dependent upon how good I have my bed leveled. Now on the printer I'm doing this on, I believe I've done a good job. So I'm going to use the same values again. It's direct drive. I'm going to hit OK. Now, this may look a little confusing. So on screen and on the bed, it's going to put PA test. And to me, at first, this threw me all off. I thought I wasn't sure what it was doing. I didn't understand. But if I slice it, you'll notice it then puts down the lines with all the measurements on the right-hand side. Now, just to show that again, to get those measurements and the numbers on the right-hand side, just make sure you check that print numbers. You really need to do that so that way you can see what you're looking at. Go back over to preview. So it starts at zero, goes up to 0.1. I'm then going to look at the bed and identify which line looks the best. Now I'm hoping it's going to be somewhere around 0.06. Because then again, that would sort of match what I found with the tower. But let's look, take a look at those lines after we print. So I'm going to print and then I'll be back in a moment. Now this is difficult to see, but I want to point out a couple of features here. We look right here. You'll notice that's where it's changing speed. So you're actually seeing a little bit of a bulge in there. Now, if I go towards the top, hopefully you can see it. We're actually starting to see a gap up here. Now I'm looking at my 0 0.06, and I'm noticing a little bit of a gap. But if I go below that, maybe it's not quite enough filament there. I'm just looking to see which line looks the most consistent. So I'm looking at this carefully. These are, it looks a little thicker in here. I'm trying to find the lines that look consistently about the same. And I'm seeing maybe here on this, it's 0 0.4, 0 0.04, I mean. So I'm going to try 0 0.04 as my pressure advance. Now that's a little bit different than what I found earlier. But I will say this seems a little bit better from the standpoint that I can actually see differences in the lines. And let's see if I can show you 0.4. And to me, 0.4 looks about the most consistent. I mean, you know, there's going to be a little bit of a difference there, which there is. It's not bad. Let me look at, let me see. Maybe 0 0.36 is even better. Let me look at this line right here. That's point 
let's see if I can read this. I've got to move move this around so I can actually read the lines. I think that's I'm going to go with 0 0.32, 0 0.032. I think 0 0.032. And I'm even seeing that on camera. 0 0.032 looks to be the most consistent throughout. So I'm going to try 0 0.032. Again, I'm going to go over to Orca Slicer. I'm going to go to Filament. And let me just change this because I, I think I like this method a little bit better because I can actually see the lines a little bit better than trying to determine what corner is best. So I've done that. Now let's try the last method, which is the PA pattern. So I'm starting with an empty bed. I'm going to go up to the top calibration, pressure advance, and then click PA pattern. Now, the steps here are a little bit different, but I'm going to go with the defaults and just try this. This end number is still within those values I've already discovered. Let's hit OK. And I've sliced the plate. Now, this is another one where when you load it, it doesn't look right. As you can see, it just does this little area here. But then when I slice it, it shows all the lines. So let me send this to the printer and then we'll look and see how this does. So I've completed the pattern test. Now let's take a look at this, see if we can analyze the results. I should point out that this test is based on the test found at Elias's print tuning guide. So that's over on this site, and I'll put a link in the video description. And one of the things I really like about this test and the line test for that matter is there's no calculations. I'm simply looking for the sharpest corner here with the fewest artifacts. So I'm looking for artifacts, bulging, and again, that sharpest corner. So let's look at the model. Now it's a little hard to see here, but I can see up in here. There are some artifacts, the lines messed up, and it looks like there's a tiny bit of bulging. Now I'm gonna to go to point three, which is what I found via the line test. And if I come down off that line, I'm noticing that the corner is pretty sharp and I'm not seeing any artifacts. Now, if I go down to point six, see if I can find something to point with. There is an artifact right in there. There's a little book. There's a little bit of filament. There's also a little bit on the other side over here. So what I'm seeing is, although the corner sharp down here at point zero six, there's these little artifacts off to the side. Now, switching back over to point oh three, I'm not seeing any artifacts. Maybe there's a little bit over here, but this is by far the best one compared to all the other models. Now. Comparing our models, I got similar results with the line method as I did with the pattern method. For me, the tower method proved to be a little bit too difficult and very subjective because I had a lot of trouble telling where there was no bulging. I also like the fact that I could see this much better. Now, to compare the three different tests, the tower on my printer took 31 minutes and 12 seconds to print. The line method took 10 minutes and 45 seconds to print. And then the pattern took 10 minutes and three seconds. And as I've already mentioned, I found the line method and the pattern method give me very similar results. Based on the speed and the ease of use, I think I would recommend the pattern method. So what does this mean? I'm going to start using the pattern method on all my printers. One, it's fast, but two, it gave me good results. So my 0.03 that I used previously in Orca Slicer is gonna stick. So let's go switch back over and take a quick look at that. So for me, I'm just going to weave the pressure advance at 0.032. So that represents what I found with the pattern test and the line test. I feel really satisfied with this. I'm going to note that on Elias's website, he actually deprecates the line test. 
So he's actually recommending, if I look over here, he's deprecated the line method. And I believe he's using that. Instead of using the line method, he's using the pattern method. I feel very comfortable rec recommending to everybody to use the pattern method. Hopefully you found this helpful doing this deep dive and taking a look at pressure advance. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks. Have a good day. This is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and I want to thank you for joining me today. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. If you need some additional help, I've also posted some links in the video description. You can set up a 15-minute help session with me, and I'm more than happy to sit down with you and see if I can help you out. If you need some additional help, I'm also going to try doing one-hour sessions for anybody that's interested. And like I said, I'm testing this stuff out. I want to thank you again for joining me, and I look forward to talking to you again next time. Thanks. Have a good day. Bye.